Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Reverend Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing and wonderful morning. I'm excited as always to have this privilege and opportunity to speak the Word of God into our lives. And this morning, it's yet another opportunity to share this word. We are continuing with the series we have titled Honor Your Father series because I do realize that there is um, an error in society today that is causing people not to receive what would be the blessings that God has designed and desires for us in our time. And so we must be able to observe and to carefully make decisions on what we have to do today to correct the error and the mistake. Allow me to demystify the point, and we say this today, honor your father and your mother, which is the, com the commandment with a promise that you may live long life uh, and, and enjoy your years. That is what we discussed yesterday. So we want to take it further this morning on this series and I want to read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter number 27. We're going to read verse number 2, uh, 3 and 4 and you'll understand why I talk about Honor Your Father series. Bible says, Then he said, Behold, I am now old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore please take your weapons, your quiver, your bow and go out to the field and hunt game for me and make savory food such as I have I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. This was a conversation between Isaac and Esau. I want to bring out to speed to you that Esau was not the only child of Isaac. I want you to know that. And so I want you to critically understand that there are some fatherhood blessings that will not come except there be a relationship. In fact, a clearly defined or demarcated kind of blessing or relationship that must be there between the father and the son. So the father says, behold, I'm now old. Now, it's, 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 it's interesting that you need to understand that there are two things here that come into play. Number one is the aspect of age. I am old. Now, let me put it to you this morning. That no matter how you are endowed, no matter how studied you are, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how prosperous you are, no matter the dimension or degree of your blessing is, you can never be better to an extent that you do not need a fatherly blessing. That cannot happen. And so age here denotes going ahead. Your father, whether physical, rather biological or spiritual, they have gone ahead of you in many ways. Now when the father says, now behold, I'm old, it means there is a timing for a blessing in our lives. And let me say this, that Whatever you do in this life, whether you're staying in the villages or in the city, you must appreciate the fact that you must constantly and consistently take care of your parents. It is interesting that there are people who enjoy the luxury of life in the cities, but shun or do not think about the condition of their parents in the villages. 
And let me tell you, you might think that you are doing well at this time. When your parents actually sleep and now your time as a parent to look at your children comes, you will have a difficult life to move through. That is a subject for another day. Today I talk about age, meaning our parents have gone ahead of us. But then Bible tells us, now please take your weapons and you bow out of your field and hand game and make me savory food such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat, my soul may bless you before I die. Now, the father understood the profession of his son. When he talks about take your weapon, your quiver, um, your bow, and go to the field and hand game for me, it is clear to me and to us that the father understood the kind of profession or what this son did. Let me tell you, it's one thing to do a job, it's one thing to do a ministry. It's another thing for your father, your parent, to consistently pray or stand with you in whatever thing that you do. It is different from other places where your parent, your father, does not even know what you do. And there are many people in this world who are doing many things, but their fathers do not even know what they do or the source of their incomes or even the kind of work they do, whether it is ministry or otherwise. The father of Esau, that is um, the man of God here, uh, would understand that, that Isaac understood what his son did. In terms of the work of his hands. There is a link between the blessing of the work of our hands. And the blessing of the father. There is a link. And now you realize that the young man was sent to bring the food by virtue of his profession. And he says, and make suffering food such as I love. And bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. Listen, it is also important that I can get from the scripture, this would not have been the first meal that Esau had met for his father. That means there was a relationship. Because how the father talk about make me food or a meal such as I love or I like. It appears to me, therefore, that this meal had been done before by his son. Now, I want you to appreciate that Isaac was married to Rebekah. So Isaac had a spouse in the name of Rebekah. So this meal being sought for is not the ordinary meal that a wife would serve the spouse. I want you to separate this meal we are talking about. In the context that you as a son, you as a child, you must look for an avenue to make your parent like what you do and love what you present to me. Your parents can never be an afterthought. Your parents can never be an afterthought. Praise God. Your parents can never be an afterthought. There must be a relationship and this blessing, this blessing is so significant. This blessing is important. So the father says that I may eat and my soul may bless you before I die. I would like to read it, this verse number four, from a different translation just to appreciate something else. Prepare my favorite dish, bring it here for me to eat, then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. 
pronounce pronounce a blessing on you are there people whose fathers have not pronounced a blessing are there people where fathers have not pronounced a blessing the answer is yes so we must correct this error in the coming series we'll discuss dealing with issues that have pained our hearts where we may be having a feeling that we don't need to contact or seek the fatherly blessing we'll look at it and we'll see we'll do what we call a cost benefit analysis what do you lose by not seeking a blessing from your father and what do you gain by having a relationship with your father there are some things you are not responsible for no matter what you do no matter the circumstances there are things you are not responsible for and there are things you can never take responsibility for whether your father and mother disagreed in the years in the past they are things as a child as a son as a daughter you can never take responsibility for there are even things whatever you do you can never correct that's why i'm here only to speak about honor your father honor your father i know there are many things that we have to do I know there are many difficult and hard things we have to get over. But have you not read in the Bible? If a man be in Christ, behold, is a new thing, the old things have passed away, and new things have come. Have you not read that in the scripture? And so, don't limit your success. Don't limit the grace of God that would be operating in your life simply by doing the right thing we are talking about honoring your father and your mother these things are critical these things are important these are things we ought to think about these are things we ought to do and believe God because of what he can do in our lives to cause his grace and his favor to begin to operate in our lives more than we can ever think by the grace of God and I say these things most of the time because I believe that God has got a plan for each one of us. He wants us to move and not struggle. He wants the blessings to overcome our lives, to be on us and even overtake us as the blessings he has said he would do in our lives. Isaac told his son, go and make for me food such as I like. And I come and pronounce a blessing on your life. Don't miss out your blessing. Yesterday, I cracked a joke with a man as I was talking to him on phone, a man who called me. And I was making a joke. And I said, I know a man of God who helped you many years ago. Have you taken time to go and visit him and just appreciate what he did in your life? It appeared to be like a joke, but I was serious literally serious on the words i say to this man because i know what it means to receive our father's blessing this morning i invite you to this place to know that this error must be corrected in our lives by the grace of god we've got to have this error corrected where people think that they are way would be okay their life would be okay as long as they continue to disregard the blessings of the father it can never be well it might appear to be well but in due time you will appreciate the role that that parental blessing would do in our lives there are many things that were avoided in the life of the king because of covenants that the father had met with God. Praise God. These are things I'm going to be bringing to your understanding.
that even if God wanted to bring judgment upon a lineage, there are certain things that God would do. Okay? If you talk about David and Solomon, if you look at that, that particular progression, you would see there are things that God overlooked because of covenants that he had with the Father. Praise God. And so, what I am saying in short, the aspect of honoring your father is something we must critically look into so that we can correct errors in our lives. We want to succeed. We want to prosper. We want to see God. I declare to you this morning in the name of Jesus, we have to begin to think about making the necessary steps to do what we have to do. We continue with this series as we go deeper into the benefits of honoring fathers and we'll also look at what do we lose by not honoring our fathers. This is what the Bible speaks to us. So, may the good Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you because of this conversation and we thank you because of this truth. Help us, Father, to find in our hearts to honor our fathers. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise and I honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord be with you and the good Lord bless you. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Amen and amen.